for joining us on the uh, on the graveyard shift we'll try and make it as light-hearted as possible uh, so uh, my name's uh, Harry Adams and I'm uh, co-CEO and co-founder of Argentex and alongside I have uh, Joe Stent uh, CFO of Argentex um, there's a few uh, mug shots of us uh, so I founded the business in 2011 uh, with Carl and Andrew uh, with the backing of uh, Pacific Investments and we listed on AIM in June 2019. Joe joined in February uh, this year, having held senior finance positions in global organizations, including Vodafone America, and more recently, the European Tour. So uh, let's start with a snapshot of the investment opportunity that uh, Argentex offers. So since 2012, we've enjoyed strong growth in a market that's still dominated by the banks. Uh, we have historic bad debt, um, so the, the historic bad debt is, is actually immaterial um, due to our belt and braces approach to compliance and risk, uh, coupled with the focus uh, of building a high quality and diverse client base that we'll come on to a little bit later. Uh, as you can see on the right hand side, we've attracted a, uh, a pretty heavy hitting uh, board um, in more than one sense. Uh, I think the CVs there will, uh, will speak for themselves. Uh, and then finally, uh, we've continued to invest in people, infrastructure and technology throughout the last 12 months, uh, putting us in a great position for the years ahead. So what do we do? Uh, we're a deliverable foreign exchange broker that offers spot forward and options to a largely corporate client base. Our clients use us for commercial purposes only. Uh, they do not speculate, we do not speculate, and our revenue comes solely from the spread. Uh, the charts here on the right hand side uh, show you the evolution of our new and repeat business which really underpins our strong growth model so uh how we work so we we win business in three ways uh repeat business uh from our existing client base which i've just demonstrated on the last slide um secondly uh we also win business from referrals or cross-selling so an example of this would be a private equity fund that uses us initially to uh, exit an investment uh, from Australia, as an example, uh, to convert Aussie dollars back into sterling. Uh, that would go well, and we would uh, obviously show their client uh, the benefit of using our Gentex over their bank or, or other provider. Uh, so then we would get referred uh, to the, um, the, the Topco, uh, and we'll start trading for um, their management fees, again, as an example. And then uh, should that go well, we'd be referred down to their portfolio clients. So from uh, one initial introduction can uh, very quickly lead to, uh, to 20 accounts. Uh, and then finally, uh, we win business through our sales team. Uh, we recruit at grassroots level. Uh, often this is their first job. Uh, training uh, is intense and we, uh, we train them to, to sell our way. Uh, it takes a couple of years for them to fully grasp the end-to-end -end sale and hit their stride. Uh, the figures here on the right-hand side show you the average revenue generated from the salesperson per year is employed. Uh, so as you can see, uh, by year five, uh, you can see them they're making considerable contribution to um, the, the firm's revenue. Uh, there is survivorship bias in these numbers. Uh, for every three we employ, one uh, won't make it. Uh, and they usually end their journey at Argentex within the first uh, six to 12 months. We, we can tell relatively quickly um, from both sides. So the, these salespeople are paid a commission of about, what's it of about, between 10 to 17 and a half percent. Um, for the, and that, that commission is paid for the life of the client. So uh, after year four, as an example, when they're, uh, they're, they're billing 1.44 million on average, um, it's a fairly sizable uh, uh, pay packet to be uh, to be walking away from. So effectively, they they lock themselves into the business. Um, they, uh, as I said, there is a sl sliding scale, and uh, the, if they if they hit their KPIs, which are basically new business targets, then they're on the the higher end of that commission sc scale. Uh, we um, we have uh, eighteen staff. Uh, that have been here less than two years. 
Uh, so that sort of shows you, it should demonstrate that we're at uh, an inflection point, uh, which is a very exciting time for us uh, right now. Um, once the salesperson has done their job and on board of the client, uh, the client is then passed over to one of six dealers, whose job is really a relationship manager uh, that adopts the private bank style of service. Uh, they give the client all the advice that's required, often presenting hedging strategies uh, and executing the, uh, the trades. Uh, you can see they're highlighted in yellow at the bottom. We're ranked number one most accurate forecaster by Bloomberg in uh, sterling euro and sterling dollar. Uh, this really sort of adds um, uh, credibility to our offering and, uh, and attracts new business. So onto page five, our addressable market. So we really target clients uh, that have an annual FX exposure of a few million to a few hundred million. We win uh, the vast majority of our clients from the high street banks. As soon as the clients start trading a few hundred million and above, the banks are, are really rather interested in them and, uh, and they're looked after. Uh, also, that's sort of uh, the, the area where the, the prime break brokers uh, take over. Anything uh, under a few million a year is really a little bit too small for us. There are plenty of tech disruptors, payment platforms, uh, white labeled SME brokers who can race to the bottom together. Uh, we're not going to enter that race. Uh, we know what we're good at and we just want to add value and do more of it. So I said earlier on, uh, it's very important to have a high quality and diverse client base, uh, certainly for, uh, for our risk profile. Uh, the chart here uh, is really to demonstrate that we're not overly exposed to any one sector. Uh, we class anything regulated as financial services. And uh, as you can see, the, uh, the second largest sector there in pink, just below the blue, is actually others. So that's made up of 26 different sectors. So we are, uh, we, we, we really are proud of this uh, diverse base. I will then pass over to Joe to talk about the performance to date. Sure, thanks, Harry. Um, so what we've done for you this evening um, is break down um, performance up to um, March 2020 and then look separately at the year to March 2021. So I'll, I'll address those separately. Um, in this first slide, slide seven here, on the left-hand side, you can see in the chart um, performance um, between the years 2013, financial years 2013 and 2020. And you'll see some really strong growth um, there um, across all facets. Um, but uh, one that, ones that I wanted to touch on uh, in particular were the, the CAGR between five year um, CAGR between 2015 and 2020. Um, so, foreign exchange turnover, as in um, flows um, coming through our business, um, grew uh, at a CAGR of 30% um, in that period. Um, and consequently, um, so did our, our gross revenues um, over that same time. And that was driven by not just new client ads um, over, the, over that time horizon, but also um, an increase in revenue per customer as well, um, which grew by 17% uh, and 20% respectively. So I, I think, you know, um, it, it's fair to say that this is a high growth uh, business. Um, and at, by the end of 2020, we were turning over just over 12 billion of foreign exchange turnover and um, just under 29 million of gross revenues. Um, that resulted in a, a reported operating profit of 10.3 million. Um, you'll know that we listed um, in that financial year, and once you add back some of those listing costs, we also reported a, an underlying profit of 12.2 million um, on that 28.9 gross revenue. So high margin, um, and also uh, what's not on here, um, but uh, is the case is uh, high, highly cash generative. So about 80% about of, of um, profits turn into cash within a, within a four month period. Um, so, so yeah, high growth, high margin, highly cash generative. Um, that's, that's the nature of our business. Um, but what I did want to address separately on the next slide um, is performance to 2021. I mean, clear, clear to, to all of us that, that, it, that it was a different year. Um, and uh, certainly in, in that financial year to March 2021 just passed, um, you know, we weathered um, all, all three uh, national lockdowns uh, and certainly we felt the impact in, in the first half of that financial year in terms of our revenue, um, as you would have seen at our interims. And uh, however, very much encouraged by uh, how uh, the second half of the year played out 
and we did see a, an upturn as, as clients kind of came back into the market um, and uh, sort of let go of that, that wait and see approach that, that may have played out in the first half. So, so encouraged by second half revenues of 16.4 um, up on the, set, the same uh, period of the prior year and also very much uh, encouraged by um, new client acquisition, uh, new client ads of uh, 665, which is up 40% on the prior year. So all of those are, are uh, good, good signals. Um, but what's really important to note is that the fundamentals of this business are, are very strong. Um, as Harry alluded to earlier, we have a, a, a diversified and quality client base. Um, we take a very prudent and proactive approach to to risk uh, very much belt and braces. Um, and, and that's demonstrated by uh, very, very low um, bad debt levels um, throughout um, the period that the business has been going. Um, and I think, you know, with all of those things together, we were able to um, continue uh, with our operational investment program and um, set ourselves up for, for growth, um, you know, a, a, as we intend, intended to do and, and sort of set out our IPO in, in 2019. So that operational investment program, and Harry's going to speak about this in a bit more detail um, subsequently, uh, included a move to our new, our new offices, um, which has capacity for growth. Um, it includes investment in technology, investment in talent. Um, and also uh, we have an eye to um, uh, ESG um, and we are implementing uh, our strategy there. And we have a very strong commitment to um, our Gentex being a, a good corporate citizen um, in that regard. So, I mean, that's that's as much as I can say uh, on 2021. Uh, you know, we, we've just finished our, our financial year and, um, you know, we'll be releasing our, our year end results in due course. This next slide really is just to say that, um, you know, we're a trading business. So we are we are subject to to fluctuations from from time to time. And you can see that, you know, play out quarter over quarter. This is a, a calend by calendar quarter view. Um, from 2015 through to kind of the first quarter of 2021 just passed. And, um, you know, if you if you sort of focus on 2019, you'll be able to see quarter over quarter fluctuations, um, you know, as some of the key milestones and Brexit were being uh, worked through, you know, we, we um, experienced fluctuations there in our trading volumes and, and then they, you know, they come back in the next quarter. Um, and, you know, and that's the case also with, you know, what we've experienced during COVID. So I think, you know, the, the important point is, is to focus on, on the longer term um, trajectory. And, and, and if you do a line from 2015 to, to, to 2021, um, I, I think it's, it's fair to say that we are, we're still very much um, a, a high growth business. Um, with that, I'll hand back to Harry just to, to go through some of some of the, you know, upcoming pieces that, that we are we're working on. Thanks, Joe. Uh, yeah, so as part of our growth ambitions, we continue to invest in all areas of the business uh, throughout the year, as Joe uh, alluded to earlier on, uh, with our CRM system and client interface being uh, no exception. Uh, we've now spent £5 million, or just over £5 million, on Cody alone, uh, developing an industry-leading, fully comp comprehensive, uh, bespoke solution that incorporates sales, dealing, payments, compliance, finance uh, and also allowing the uh, the client to trade online um, although i said earlier on that we would not enter the uh, the tech race at the bottom uh, we are investing in optimizing the client journey uh, by redesigning the client portal and launching an app later on this year um, the the new launch path will not only offer clients the convenience to trade online uh, it would also tie in the growing suite of products and information that we currently offer but just not online uh, the improved CRM system and, and new online uh, offering really allows us to uh, to scale seamlessly uh, geographically and also in London. Uh, so that's uh, that's where we are at the moment. We, um, we we moved to our new London headquarters, which is where I'm sat on uh, on the edge of Oxford Street, which has been a little bit more entertaining uh, in the last couple of days than it has over the last couple of months. Um, we uh, we have the ability now to scale the UK business, which had been uh, constrained prior to uh, the, the first national lockdown last year. Um, although uh, we haven't been able to fully utilise the space yet, uh, we do have the capacity to nearly double the headcount before we, uh, we reconfigure this office. 
So as part of our growth ambition, um, it was also uh, up to us to identify similar market dynamics overseas. So our international expansion is progressing, uh, although uh, it is at a slightly slower pace due to uh, the travel restrictions. Uh, Amsterdam is now 12 months old, pretty much to the day. Uh, it was initially set up as uh, a Brexit no deal contingency. Uh, with the loss of passporting, it is now our window to Europe. Uh, we have a full Dutch regulation pending. Uh, in terms of um, you know, how it's doing, we have 91 corporates on boarded uh, from a standing start, which uh, I, I'm very pleased with. Um, and we, uh, we have uh, big plans for, uh, for Amsterdam, but that will be growing organically. Uh, in terms of Australia, uh, those of you who know our business would have heard us talk about Australia a few times now. Uh, this really, um, uh, I know a lot of people use COVID as, as a, an excuse to uh, potentially not uh, press on with plans, but uh, my business partner's passport has been at the Australian Embassy for the last uh, four or five months. Uh, they are getting through the admin, but very slowly. Um, but our, uh, our stage one application is in, um, and we, uh, we aim to update uh, the market, how that's going towards the end of this financial year. So uh, in summary, uh, we've explained how and why this year has been a bit of a speed bump in the, uh, the road for our Gentex's growth. Uh, clearly uncertainty remains. Uh, however, encouragingly, client trading activity continues to improve and record number of new corporates are signing up to our services. The uh, UK corporate FX market is absolutely enormous. Uh, it is there for the taking and with estimated 85% of corporate FX flow still going through the high street banks, our Gentex with our 12 and a half billion pounds worth of FX flow equates to about 0.2% of the overall market share. Uh, it would have been all too easy just to hunker down in the last 12 months and uh, maybe our flat revenue would suggest that we did that, but uh, through the investment in all areas of the business, operationally we're a far stronger uh, business and we're perfectly positioned for the coming years. Uh, so we'll leave it there, that's the end of the, uh, the presentation and we'll, um, we'll open up to questions. What effects do you think the magic word Brexit <laughs> will have on the company going forward, if at all? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we um, are optimistic in terms of there being uh, some sort of agreement in uh, financial services. Uh, however, I, I think uh, everyone's learned uh, not to sort of trust their instincts on Brexit. Uh, and be prepared for the worst. So, you know, in terms of uh, uh, contingency, as I said earlier on, we have in place a plan, and uh, that is uh, that is going through the Dutch regulator uh, as we speak. Uh, in terms of uh, client behaviour, uh, Joe pointed out a couple of uh, down quarters and a couple of uh, better quarters in the last three years, um, and that really is down to client behaviour. You know, it, it's no surprise that clients have sat on their hands in terms of a, uh, a Brexit cliff edge, much like they were sitting on their hands last summer, uh, not knowing whether their business would be surviving. So, um, but it, in terms of Brexit, I, I think, uh, you know, certainly sentiment uh, seems to have shifted. Um, and we're, uh, I think you know, everyone is happy that we're not sort of reading about it on the front pages and, and in the headlines every single day. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, how would you differentiate yourself from Alpha FX? Yeah, I mean, Alpha FX, we, we both um, sell foreign exchange. Uh, you know, they're, they're a good company. Uh, we're a good company. Um, it'd be foolish to say our euros are better than your, their euros because, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, it doesn't really work like that. But, you know, we do work in very different um, areas of the market. So, uh, you know, one, um, one, uh, uh, case that you we, we didn't show you today but it, it could be in the appendix uh, I won't flick through it now um, and, and that is we do concentrate uh, on spot and forward uh, so we, we're about 50% spot 50% forward trades uh, whereas they uh, they certainly dominate the um, sort of the hedging strategy treasury management uh, forward contracts which is more lucrative for sure uh, but it does come with a bit more risk you you, you don't uh, realize that profit uh, on the day that you book the trade as you would a, a, as a spot trade. Um, and uh, you know that, that cash doesn't come to value in, until the client pays, which can be any time between now and four years time. 
Uh, but ultimately, you know, they're, they're, they're a solid business, they're, they're, they're a good player, um, and uh, uh, we, whether we, we do compete, um, but we, we do operate in slightly different markets. Okay. Okay, the, um, the growth in client numbers looks like it should bode well. How do you get yourselves comfortable that client numbers accurately reflect live active accounts? And how recently do clients have to have traded to remain classed as a client? Yeah, I mean, a good question. Um, uh, take it from me that uh, we very rarely have uh, an incoming call from a CFO to say that, uh, oh, I've been looking forward to meeting a foreign exchange broker because I've been doing my foreign exchange trades all wrong for the last 20 years. Uh, it is a, uh, it's a sales process where, you know, we really do have to demonstrate why we add value against the bank or the, the other broker. Um, and very rarely would a, uh, a CFO go through the KYC process, which is rather rigorous, uh, unless they had a trade to do. So uh, it's simply not a case of uh, just getting the numbers through the door for us to sort of inflate that figure. You know, they, they, they do have to be uh, uh, vetted from our side, uh, but also, as I say, it is quite a process for um the the cfo to to open an account with us so uh, again it will it will be in the uh, appendix i believe or it will be in a um uh, and, and you can uh, reach out to us separately it's definitely in our annual report from last year with the uh, the lead time the average lead time in days between a client signing up and first trading uh, but you know one thing that i have noticed is that uh, a lot of clients have signed up this year and haven't quite pulled the trigger quite yet. Okay. Okay, I appreciate you don't trade FX per se, but is there any benefit to you if FX rates become more volatile um, or doesn't it really matter that much? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Volatility is great for us. Um, <coughs> you know, it's, um, uh, it, it presents more opportunities. And if you look at the, uh, the Q1, uh, yeah, Q1 2020 um, bar chart. Um, you'll see that uh, you'll 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 see the uh, the Q2 2020. So Q Q1 2020, uh, which was March last year, where some of you might remember that sterling dollar went from around about 140ish down to 115 in the space of three or four days. You know, that's no surprise that it was our, our best month to date, um, and it probably will be our best month for a long time. Um, and that that sort of uh, you know that those sort of market conditions were a perfect storm. Uh, so without a doubt, volatility does help. Okay. What spe specific plans do you have to use your client base to increase your offering outside strict FX, or will you primarily stick to FX? Yeah, I mean, just going back to what I said earlier on, you know, we, we know what we're good at, uh, we know where we add value, and we want to do more of the same. Uh, you know, we have looked at, uh, you know, using that uh, that client base uh, for potentially opening up some more products, but realistically, you know, it, it's, uh, we, we don't want to start, you know, muddying our name and, and uh, mm. pretending to be something that we're not. So, you know, there's, very, there's various uh, uh, products that we can uh, cross sell, but they're all foreign exchange based. So as an example, where a client has been hedging using the, the, the sort of vanilla spot and forwards for the last few, uh, few years, um, it might be more appropriate that we can offer options uh, and something uh, that gives them uh, a little bit more upside uh, especially in times when uh, you know you just spoke about volatility, we're not seeing the volatility, or or we're trading at historical low levels on sterling. You know, th there's some sort of product in there that can uh, uh, that, that can give them a worst case price, but there is uh, the upside gain. You know, that that can be uh, particularly popular. Okay, I think we've got time for one more. Are you publishing a full set of annual accounts? Joe. <laughs> yes, we yes we will be. So uh, absolutely. So you can look forward to that in due course in the next um, uh, few months. OK, that was a short one. I think we'll squeeze one more in for you. Uh, any comments on the potential M&A activity in this sector? Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there has been a fair amount of consolidation in the sector. Uh, we know of uh, a few competitors or, or you know, loose <laughs> competitors because they, uh, they trade foreign exchange that 
are, are, are looking at either exiting uh, because they have private equity backing or potentially um, uh, listing. Uh, can't really comment on uh, on their plans. You know, we we um, we're just keeping our head down. Uh, you know, we, we've we're in a really good place, and we're just going to continue doing um, what we're doing. Uh, it, it's certainly not on our radar at the moment, um, or certainly no uh, uh, no opportunities have been presented to us. Okay. All right. Well, Harry, Joe, thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you much for answering the question. If I didn't ask all the questions available to me, then I'm sorry, we've run out of time. But um, again, thanks and a good night to you both. Great, Thank thanks, Chris. Take care. Take care. Bye.